Now, I heard the word broadband, and I still I get the chills, which is a good thing. The debate and discussion that you heard a little bit about already today and is going on all over our country and around the world are really at the heart of innovation and collaboration, and that's something we actually have a lot of experience with at Bell Alliance, collaborating, and you heard about that in spades, from the panelists with our employees, collaborating with our customers, collaborating with our communities, and I believe that together, as the panelists did, we can accomplish a lot more than we can alone. And that's especially true when it comes to dealing with challenge, change, and innovation. And that's the story that I want to share with you today, the story of how we met our challenges head on. We took on some massive change, and in doing so, we became a catalyst for innovation in many of our communities. But this isn't just a Bell Alliance story. My theory is that innovating is a very big part of the culture in Atlanta, Canada. It's in the people, it's in the place, it's driven by a need for resourcefulness and creativity, in part, it's just how the region is wired, so to speak. It's a region with the most university students per capita in the country, and home to 17 universities, four community colleges with globally renowned research facilities that attract researchers from around the world. But you won't find anyone in the region saying that innovation is easy. I don't think any of our panelists would have said that innovation is easy. In fact, it's downright hard, isn't it? And it comes with risk. And that's a big part of our story, too. Now, when I say innovation, I want to remind you I'm talking about innovation in the broadest sense. For Bell Alliance, innovation is not just about finding great new products. It's also about finding new ways of doing old things and then taking that innovation out to customers and communities so they can make their own difference and spark more change and innovation. That's what being a catalyst is really all about. But before I dive too deep, let me give you a little bit of background. So let's go back about 10 years. The telecommunications industry then looked nothing like it does today. Residential broadband was still largely, believe it or not, in its infancy, as was local telephone competition. Then things changed in a big way. Competition kicked in, and it was fierce. Right across the country, the cable companies actually became faster than the incumbent telcos. In fact, as incumbents, in many ways, we were back on our heels across the industry. In a very short span of time, competition heated up dramatically to the point where it's now taken for granted throughout most of the country. So a quick example in my territories to make that point. In 2005, only 15, that's one five, 15 percent of my customers had a choice of provider for voice service in 2005. Today that number stands at 75 percent. That's a lot of competitive change very, very quickly. And it wasn't just the competitive landscape. We were also seeing massive change on the horizon when it came to our customers. They were no longer relying on us for traditional phone service like they used to. And partly because of competition, also because of new tools, new demands, new expectations, cell phone use was up. And at the same time, broadband demand was increasing. People were online like never before. And not just for emails and surfing, they were uploading downloading, gaming, sharing photos, sharing videos. Video was really the key here in driving a lot of our consumption broadband. They were doing it all online. It also wasn't just individual consumers. Our businesses and enterprise customers were also demanding more. As their customer base was shifting and they were communicating globally on a whole new scale, they were driving unparalleled growth in data transmission. Demand for bandwidth was showing signs of actually exploding. Dial-up and even cable and DSL, they were going to have trouble keeping up. And customers were looking to companies like us and many others for answers. So after a relatively brief period of seeing the competition and the consumer trends taking hold, we knew we needed to take action. But what was the solution? How could we make a difference? You heard a lot about leadership just now. How could we lead rather than follow? Enter something called fiber to the home. 
As many of you know, Fiber to the Home service is the fastest form of broadband out there. It means all of the content that comes into your TV and into your computer travels on fiber optic cables, not traditional copper wire, and all the way to your home. It doesn't stop a block or two away. It goes all the way to your home. It allows faster downloads, faster uploads, less congestion, more bandwidth. Sounds good, right? It'll let us actually get to speeds up to a gig. As Nike would say, so just go do it, right? Well, it's not that simple to deploy fiber to the home. First was the risk factor. Fiber to the home was brand new and pretty unknown in this part of the world. South Korea and Japan had been at it for some time, and in the US, Verizon, the leading provider of fiber to the home, was just getting started and facing some skepticism. Then there was the cost and complexity. All of our investigating told us it wouldn't be easy. It would mean building an entirely new network from the ground up, and as you can imagine, that was not an inexpensive undertaking either. It would require a lot of investment. It would also require a lot of new engineering, and then it would require some more investment, and then some training, and then a little more investment. I think you get the picture. Not once did we think it would be easy, because investing more than half a billion dollars, which is what we've done so far, never is. It would also require a major shift in how we did business in every aspect of the company. That's a big culture change, a big change for a 100-year-old old boat telephone company. And we were used to doing things a certain way. Were we up for it? Could we take the risk? Well. The answer was clearly yes, and not just from me, from my whole team. They knew they could do it, but that was not the immediate reaction. No, we had to do a lot of homework, testing, number crunching, late nights. And when we were sure that the business case made sense, then we moved forward. 